Hello everyone, my name is Curtis White from Beyond Backtesting, that's the Be Backtesting Twitter, Beyond Backtesting blog, and the Beyond Backtesting YouTube channel, that's a lot. And actually, having said all that, uh, just stay tuned because I may be renaming my channel, my at least my Twitter feed, to be exclusively dedicated and focused on AI stuff because most of my stuff is on AI now. And then uh, creating a another Twitter feed just for trading, though I know some people follow me for both. Uh, but what you see here is a diagram. It's a mind map that I created with no manual editing. I did no manual editing with this. And then I created this in the GPT-3 Playground. Okay, could have probably created it in ChatGPT as well. They're very similar. There are some slight differences, but I'll show you how to do that. Um, I did not use the ChatGPT because I burned my credits. But essentially, you can say this was created in ChatGPT or GPT-3, right, and with no manual editing. And I'm gonna keep this video pretty short. I'll get to the to the solution pretty quickly for you, but I wanna throw a few things in because it would be interesting if I just jumped to the solution, right? Uh, but this is what we're gonna be creating. Okay, so let me show you some of the fails. Uh, it might be, make it more entertaining. So this is not a fail, but this is an SVG I created on uh, the uh, 64, Commodore 64 startup screen. This was really good, I thought. Um, and uh, I put a few extra things in here, but uh, my first initial thought was to use, maybe I could use SVG or the HTML canvas. And uh, let me show you what that looked like. This was a, a good success. Um, I did a little bit of manual editing on, editing on this, but uh, you know, it did this, it was very slow to output this. Not very practical, but pretty cool looking, right? So right, so the reason I was playing with SVGs to begin with was because I was trying to create a mind map. And this was the uh, first attempt in SVG and uh, this took a, in some ways it's kind of impressive that it was able to do it at all. And on the other way, it's it's not very useful it's, it's, because this took forever to output. And uh, you know, it's not, it's, it, 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 it kind of looks like a mind map, but it's not, it's not useful. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of falls in the, uh, the area of neat, right? Neat, but not useful. So my first initial thought, thought was, okay, SVG, HTML canvas and, and none of that stuff is going to be efficient enough to actually be useful. So then I started thinking, okay, if I could use a, create an outline format, then I could have it. Uh, I could have it create me a. I could create a program with it that that would actually display the that would actually display the, my outline as a mind map. I said that'd be pretty cool, right? Because it can we can create, generate programs for it. And, um, but then I thought this is very complex. This would be a, a fairly complex program for it to make. Uh, I think it may could do it. I don't know if it could or not, but it's probably not going to be exactly what I want. It's gonna take a long time, right? So I said, I gotta, that's, that could be something to look at, but it's probably too complex. What I need, what I need is just to find an outline format. So let me show you this. So what I discovered, probably through the Ask the GPT itself, is uh, is there a structured outline view that you know that exists? And there is called OPML. Now OPML is an XML-like format, open source for uh, mind mapping for diagramming, uh, apparently. And it's uh, this is uh, a known format. And because we, we tend to anthropomorphize, you know, anth was it anthropomorphize, anthropomorphic. Uh, anthropomorphize AI, and uh, it's in some cases that can be limiting because you know AI it's it's artificial artificial intelligence, so we can understand different formats and languages of of, of uh, file formats, right? And in this case, it was able to to generate this. Now this was my first attempt, right? So now that doesn't mean that you're going to have the same success, but this was a pretty impressive attempt, the first attempt, and I know that's not always the case. But um, as I scroll through here, so basically what I did was I said, okay, you know, create a structured OPML mind map for, you know, these topics I want to create, right? And uh, then I said, just add detail. I don't know if it's actually finished output in here, uh, actually, because it only had, uh, maybe it was, I don't know, but I just said, just add more detail, right? And added this, this is what it created. And uh, so uh, then once it finished creating this, I basically just took this and I just deleted I said no manual editing, and I didn't edit the file format, but I did just remove the, uh, you know, the the uh, text like that. And then uh, what what you're seeing here as well, you may say, what what am I what am I showing you here? This is actually Visual Studio Code, and when you're working in uh, Playground, I find this uh, having Visual Studio Code up and very useful because unlike ChatGPT now that stores a history, it doesn't have a history save feature. 
Um, and so the, the next step was to take this, uh, this uh, OPML file and then I just put it into its own file and I saved it, okay? Now, um, there are OPML viewers. You can, uh, code beautifiers and viewers you can, you can find on the web and to see if, if it, if it uh, you know, generates it properly, but that's not gonna show you the mind map view. Now, the, uh, there are many, uh, several mind mapping softwares because this is a standard format that support OPML. There, there, there are you know, lots of different, uh, or several different mind mapping softwares with different types of subscription, uh, subscription plans and uh, you know, cost structures and things that support this. Uh, format. You just have to find one that supports the import of it, not just the export. But you need one. Find, you have to find. You need to find a mind mapping software that supports the import. And you know, you can also ask it. You know, you can do it through Google. And I found it was pretty efficient to ask it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this is I guess my, one of my first prompts. And you know, what what allows me to do this? And you know, so this kind of this was kind of the, okay. This this is this is the uh, show me it was possible, right? And the one I set it on uh, is XMind, okay, XMind. That's the one I, the one I show in the files. Let me show you that, but before I do, I'm gonna show you one more thing. So you may know this, this is the playground. This, you can find this at openai.com uh, slash playground. And you will need some credits, you'll get some free credits, but you will need some credits to use this. And if you, um, if you use all your, um, your, your, if you get throttled in the, uh, chat GPT you can always come here and work um, it's not exactly the same uh, but it's pretty close and the nice thing is you have some credits you you you, you give them uh, and it's, it's fairly affordable I've been using it pretty heavily and I think I've used like $20 this month pretty heavily so uh, you can track that you can set you know, your limits on here but um, it looks to be fairly affordable and uh, it's not exactly the same but but the uh, good thing is you can come and work here if you get throttled in the uh, chat GPT. So uh, one thing to note is if you, in your standard, it's just, uh, it's a little different uh, structure. It's not a chat structure, but it has some different examples here. If you come down to chat, you'll get a, uh, you'll get a, a format that's much similar to the chat GPT. Again, it's not exactly the same, has some advantages, has some disadvantages. Um, the main disadvantage is you hit this maximum length, length in this, in this mode. At least I don't know how to, uh, how to prevent that versus in the chat GPT that kind of scrolls off. Uh, but this can be useful for certain things, right? So this is how I actually generated it, right? I just said basically, you know, generate, uh, you know, generate, I don't want to type because it's very loud, but I basically just typed out, generate me an OPML for, you know, C sharp and the mind map. And let me show you the last final step here. So just to recap, this is the, the prompt I use, create a structured OPML mind map for C sharp, go, uh, Kotlin and Scala and uh, that was the prompt that I said at detail and uh, last bit so this is uh, X mind this is the one I the one I showed you right and all I did was go in here file import OPML okay um, and there may be some other mind mapping uh, you know languages or, or uh, ways of marking up stuff that can work as well apparently this supports markdown some other things. And again, OPML is a standard open source XML-like format that, that many programs support. So you don't necessarily have to use this program, right? And I will say this is the first attempt and it was it appeared to be very efficient, appeared to be something that would actually be useful, but I haven't did a lot with it, right? This uh, on surface looked pretty impressive to me and, and, and functional most of all. And then, uh, so that's, that's the step. So basically just tell it to generate OPML. There are some other mind mapping formats as well. I haven't tested. You could try if your mind mapping software that you want to use doesn't support OPML or supports another uh, import language, but I haven't tested that, so I can't speak to that. But, uh, you know, yeah, just say, hey, generate me OPML for your mind map, and, uh, uh, you know, you can import it into your program and see how it looks. The other thing, uh, the one other thing I would suggest is, so while you're working, you may wonder if your OPML is in the right format, and there are these, uh, again, these, uh, these these websites you can find on the on the web, uh, these free sites like Code Beautify, and you can just paste in your OPML, and you can see that it that it uh, you know you can see if it uh, if if it's if it uh, there's something wrong with it or not. And in this case, it looks good. Now um, the uh, so you can do that when you're generating it. The uh, but you know this is not the exact form you want to see it in. And unfortunately, I was hoping to be some simple web that would. Uh, 
that would actually, you know, we'll say format it um, because you could, I'm sure they're out there um, where you could actually use this to use, to create tree views. You could, you can use this, uh, I haven't verified it, but I suspect, you know, with just probably a, a minor change or something, you can generate tree views, you can generate, generate all kinds of views of structured data with this type of a format. So um, that's all, hope it helps.